Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. Um, this is going to be a short video, but it's going to demonstrate the fallacy committed here uh, when we look at historical evidence and historical data to critique a particular position. And now this is really interesting because usually those who are very skeptical, such as agnostics and atheists, you know, the same people who love to constantly question the validity of religion, um, they will generally say things like, you know, the Quran is an ancient book, it's based on tales, it's based on mythologies, it's based on hearsay, it's based on one man's interpretation, um, you know, it's what Muhammad said and things like that. And the, the criticism and the way they criticize it, the way they look at it as an ancient text, um, it can't be historically validated, it can't be validated basically, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's what one man says. But then I find this really interesting because you look at the Christian critics, you look at the secular critics or the atheist critics of Islam, you look at them and whenever they want to criticize, for example, Islam or let's say the Ottoman Empire, right, they always refer to historical material. And that historical material could be someone writing a letter many, many years ago, hundreds of years ago. And they take this particular letter, which is criticizing, for example, the Ottoman Empire, what they did, uh, accusing them of committing crimes and all this sort of stuff. And it's treated, the critic takes this text and they literally treat it as if it's gospel, right? Or if it's holy, right? And they make videos about it, you know, criticizing Islam and criticizing the Ottoman Empire for the barbarism and the brutality, the un injustice or genocide or mass killing or... or the, the, the poor treatments of slaves, you know, criticizing it, right? And you think to yourself, hang on a minute, but earlier you were saying the Quran is an ancient text. It was written by, you know, a man, and it's according to the opinion of one man, and he came and he started writing the Quran or whatever it is, and we can't accept this. But the irony is, when they discover historical ancient texts, which agrees to their own biases towards Islam, it's suddenly accepted. It's, you know, the, the fact that it's ancient, it doesn't matter. In fact, for them, it's like a prized treasure. Honestly, it's like they find gold. Ample gold in a cave, right? It's treasured. It's like, oh my God, look at this masterpiece. Now, can you imagine, folks, in the 20th century, 2020, we're in the year 2020, and many people write criticisms against Islam, right? Suppose, suppose, in the year 3050 or 3022, a thousand years from now into the future, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Someone finds a letter dated to 2022. It's a thousand years old. And then they say, Oh my God, look at this. This must be true about Islam. Someone literally started criticizing. They found this letter criticizing Islam or, you know, criticizing, say, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. <laughs> I'm referencing Recep Tayyip Erdogan because, you know, critics say, oh, you look at him as a khilafah. Suppose, you know, you found CNN or BBC 
this letter criticizing Erdogan, right? But now, whatever the media says, it must be true. Yeah? Can you imagine that we find this letter that's dated in 2022 and we're like, oh my God, this must be true. It must be true because it was written in the year 2022, criticizing Erdogan, right? People will say, that's just the media. It could be right, it could be wrong. Why are we treating it like it's some special document? Many people write thousands of criticisms against Islam and Muslims. Does it mean they all are true? And Muslims write criticisms about, about Christians. Muslims write criticisms about atheists. Imagine Muslims found that particular letter. Oh my God, you know, it was written by a Muslim in the year 2022. We found it and we're in the year 3022. It, this document's a thousand years old. It's criticizing Christians and Jews and atheists. Oh my God, I just found this amazing document which must be true, right? You'd say, is this a joke? But then why do, why do these Christian or atheist critics, they criticize, for example, the Quran for being a historical document and say it's a book of ancient, it can't be true, it was written, blah, blah, blah. But then they find a particular document or a letter criticizing Islam or the Ottoman Empire and it suddenly becomes gospel. It suddenly becomes this historical masterpiece that has been preserved as the truth. But when it comes to the Quran or other ancient scripture, no, that, that's false. That, 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 was, that, that was something written by a desert Bedouin. Right? And it seems even with these critics, right? It, I mean, they find a particular letter that was written thousands of years ago and they don't know really who the author is. They don't know if he was a liar. They don't know if he was a criminal, whether he went to prison. They don't know if he was a noble person. Nothing. They just find a piece of paper written by John Smith something criticizing the Ottoman Empire. That's it. That's it. Simple. You don't know if he's a criminal. You don't know if he worked for the justice of peace. You don't know if he has a, a good name. Nothing. Nothing. He could, be, he could be the most barbaric, cruel, liar, criminal himself. But no, they don't care about that. As long as John Smith has signed that letter, it's credible. <laughs> right? See, in Islam, we have hadith. We have isna. We can't accept every hadith. We have to look at the chain of narrators. The, are they from the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him? Uh, who were their fathers? If, is he a liar? Was he a criminal? Was he a thief? Was he this? There's a whole biography of each narrator. We can't just accept any narration. It has, it has to come through a trustworthy line of narrations. We can't just find the hadith and say, oh yeah, it's authentic. But with these Christians, oh, it's a historical document. It's, it's thousands of years ago. Because they put a price tag on it. Yes, yeah, something found thousands of years ago. They already put a price tag on it. They're like, oh, we found this manuscript. It's, it's 2,000 years old. So, you know, this thing is worth now $50 million. $50 million in the museum. That's what it's worth. So already when they do that, I'm not saying you can't do that. You know, historical documents are treasured, but are they, are they treasured to the extent that they are true information? I mean, Christians themselves, there are documents that are written before Islam, 2,000 years after Jesus Christ. Christians say they're apocryphal, heretical writings written by, for example, um, the Apocalypse of Peter that is rejected by the, um, by the Christian church. It's a historical document that is written about Jesus 200 years after him. Closely relative to a lot of the other manuscript dates. But it's rejected. It came before Islam, before the Quran. It's rejected. Because it doesn't coincide with, with the biblical teachings. 
So I just find it really bizarre. I honestly find it really bizarre that especially these atheists who call themselves real critical thinkers, they pick up a piece of document, they find a piece of historical document criticizing a religion or whatever, and they're like, oh my God, we just uncovered, we just uncovered the, the document of truth. Truth, this now exposes religion and the Ottoman Empire. Oh my God. You know, the same people, the same people that claim that they're critical thinkers, the same people that question every source, where it came from, is it authentic? Who was it written by? Is a person trustable? Right? You know? And they love judging things, you know, like, oh, you know, we're Western academia, where there's a court process, there, there must be a witness, there must be a testimony, there must be numerous witnesses, it must be a trial, and there must be cross-references, cross-referencing, there must be investigation of the sources, investigation of the witnesses, there has to be cross-examination, whatever. You know, this is to prove whether someone's innocent or guilty, right? But when it comes to document, innocent or guilty, truth or lies, there's no such thing. John Smith is his name on the bottom of the document. We're going to accept it as truth. It's a historical monument. We're going to make now a 10-minute video criticizing the Ottoman Empire because we found a particular letter criticizing the Ottoman Empire, right? So whatever he says, the experiences he had with the Ottoman Empire must be true. When he could just be a liar. He could just be anti-Islam, an anti-Islamic empire. Right? He could lie through his teeth. No, 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 we're not going to accept that. We found a thousand-year-old document that criticized the Ottoman Empire. Therefore, it's true. These are, and these are the same atheists that say they are critical thinkers. They are critical thinkers. They really are skeptical with the investigation. Unbelievable, isn't it? The hypocrisy.